next door off. Good morning. I think my camera is out of focus. Let's just see. Good morning, everybody. We have had a, a bit of a problem. Google Plus, sorry we started late. It looks possibly as if the comment tracker might not be working again. Last night, we tested it over and over again. It worked flawlessly. And this morning, it seems not to be. So what I've had to do is um, you just press pause on that video when it starts, which you were, the page you were just on, the uh, Internet Explorer. We're going to have a little tr trouble at the beginning here getting going. Um, A lot of trouble here at the beginning. Now I can see that Anne from Easy Gluten Free. I can see Roddy is in, gorgeous Roddy Chrome is in. Um, but I may not be able to see your questions. Um, we are having to watch them through a third party computer. Oh, anyway, good morning. Welcome to Steve's Kitchen. I think we might just stay away from that one unless we absolutely. If you watch this video for the moment, we've got a question and answer app. And if you watch this video on YouTube, don't bother going to Google Chrome at the moment and using the Q&A app because we don't think the questions, I've been typing questions on another computer to myself and none of them have been coming through. So um, all we keep getting is trouble uh, connecting to server, which is exactly what we had the week before. So it looks to me as if we're going to have the same sort of problems. So I may be able to see your comment if you comment on, I've just turned the heating down, it's getting very hot in the house. It is National Fluffer Nutter Day in the USA. So this week we're gonna have some fun. I'm going to be making some peanut butter cookies and I'm going to be putting some fluff and nutter on there as well, some fluff on there. For those of you who don't know what fluff is, when I was uh, a young boy, I used to love this stuff. My camera doesn't seem to be focusing. Let's just give it a little touch there and see. Is that in focus? Morning, Isaac. You found it. Good. Isaac's comments coming through. I'm guessing you are commenting. Isaac, are you commenting on YouTube? It does take a little while for the comments to come through. We will te test the Q&A app. I think we'll close Internet Explorer down, actually, because I don't think we're going to be able to jump between Internet Explorer. I think we'll, we'll... Let's just have a little... And I've seen some questions coming through from Anna. Uh, hi Anna, how are you? Good to see you. So I've got Anne and Anna in and I've got the gorgeous Roddy Chrome in the audience as well. But I'm going to cl close down the Internet Explorer because it may mess around with our uh, internet speeds. So if you haven't had fluff before, it's a sort of marshmallow spread. It's actually an Italian meringue spread. So I might even... Um, explain a little bit more about that later in the show. So we've got four viewers in at the moment. I'd just like somebody to send a comment from the YouTube. I'm so sorry if you're in Google Plus watching this. Um, and I'm, I'm sorry if it gets a bit messy. I, I guess one day, one day, Google will get this thing sorted out. We'll pop into the Q&A app every two or three minutes to see if it started working. But every time we go there at the moment, it's just saying trouble connecting to server and we're not getting the list of questions that we should uh, be getting through. So you can type questions on there. There's a good possibility we cannot see those questions, not on any of our computers here. So um, I'll just reiterate, if you go to YouTube itself um, and go to my channel, you'll see the video is now live on the channel. You can click on that video and just comment below the video if you want to ask a question. It's a bit of a pain, but uh, there we go. So let's see, have we got any comments down there? You can scroll down a little bit and just see and, and move ones that we've read. 
So it's 12, yes, and this show started late, and I'm so sorry for that. Uh, Banja, oh, Banjax 66. <laughs> yeah, I'm very sorry. The show started late. I just, uh, I, we couldn't get the comments to come through. I was over on my other computer over there sending comments. Nothing was coming through, so it was just so, so frustrating. Um, I would remove the comments that uh, that we've seen that are older ones from the, the thing. So I'm just waiting to see if I can get any comments through at all. Now I know there'll be people typing in the comment tracker, that little green box down the bottom, and they'll be typing in there and asking questions. They're not coming through to me. And it's nothing that I can do my end. It's all down to Google. So sorry. And last night it worked like a dream, which is so frustrating. Well, I wouldn't say it worked like a dream. Nothing in Google really works like a dream. It worked like a sort of a daydream, one that you could easily just wake up from. Carleen, uh, you can comment from where you just commented from. I'm guessing you commented on the YouTube. So hi, and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. They're old ones, so you can, the ones that are all from 2014, they can all be moved because they're, uh, it's not 2014, but the dated ones, the, the ones with times on, we can, we can keep because they will be newer ones. Uh, there, you can actually comment from within Google Hangouts, I think on the events page, so, um, but I don't think you can watch the video from there. Hello, 999000, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I should say, and I was going to say, but we're all in a fluster this morning. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night, because all around the world there will be different times. And I'm sorry if it's way too late for you. I've had a few messages through saying I'm in bed asleep. Well, you can still watch this thing um, uh, live or semi-live on the sh on the channel a little bit later on today. All right, a lot of a lot of bits are coming through. Uh, Anna, you're asking whether or not, let's pop that up on screen, let's see if this works. Anna loves my coach, she says, where do I get them from? Well, they're all made for me. Uh, do I have anything with a Japanese flag thing? No, I don't, Anna, at the moment. I have a few flag, I'm always on the lookout for flag designs. Um, and if I have a, a certain theme coming up, uh, I have a Union Jack design, I have my, my Aussie flag which uh, which i love and um i i will be looking out for uh, other flag designs as, a, as and when the opportunity arises <clears throat> so banjax 66 all working there great um maybe somebody could just tell me if they where they're commenting from so i can give that advice to other people you're on youtube banjax thank you very much um i saw your comment there Excellent. Um, Mookie Cookie 44. <laughs> uh, you're on YouTube. No idea what fluffer nutter is. Wow, you should do. Shame on you. <laughs> no, really. Uh, why would you? Uh, even, even in Australia, this is uh, sold really as an international product. Let's just get the focus working on that camera again. It's uh, an international product. Uh, it's from the USA. It's a sort of gooey marshmallow spread. When we were kids, we used to have peanut butter and jelly, and we used to have fluffer nutter, which is peanut butter and fluff. Now, it's the oddest combination. It's like having a sticky marshmallow. Great fun. I must admit, I don't, <laughs> I don't eat this very often now as an adult, but as a kid, I used to love it. And we're going to be making peanut butter cookies. If you want to make peanut butter cookies with me today, um, we've got a camera, um, a counter camera as well, and I'll just pop that one on so you can see it. What we'll need, we're going to be needing about 
half a cup of, of peanut butter, uh, some butter, same amount of butter, uh, some brown sugar, egg, a little bit of salt, uh, some baking soda, and some self-raising or self-rising flour as well. I want about a cup and a half of that. So if you want to join in with me and make these cookies, you're going to need that. Now you can use all-purpose flour and you can add baking powder into them. And we are using a combination of baking powder and baking soda. There's a science, there's a reason behind that. Um, and I'll explain perhaps if I get chance. It's to do with, uh, baking powder is, is um, a product that rises when it's brought up to a certain temperature, uh, whereas baking soda reacts with with uh, with moisture or fats, I think, uh, or the acids, and so it has a faster release time. And I do find if you use baking soda and baking powder combined in cookies, for this type of cookie anyway, you generally get a nicer rise out of it because the baking uh, soda reacts fast and expands the cookie up the baking powder continues to let it expand and you get a nice dome cookie. That's the, that's the idea. Isaac, you're on YouTube. Thank you very much for letting me know. We won't be, we won't, we won't be putting uh, every comment up. Oh, Steve, just one minute. Good morning, Steve from Steve's Cooking. How are you, buddy? Good to have you in the house. Uh, you were with me as last week, so it's always good. I know you were having a fiddle there with Google uh, Hangouts. Oh, you'll know just at the moment how tricky it is to get this thing going. I reckon that eventually this will get a lot smoother the more we use it, so let's hope so. Anna, it is, it is great from Leeds, Leeds United. Uh, from Leeds in England. <laughs> now, would you believe, and I'm a Leeds United supporter from, from Young, that'll upset a few people. There, there'll be all the Man U and Liverpool supporters and Arsenal supporters <laughs> coming on. Forgive me. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm not, uh, <laughs> not probably going to mention that again. Uh, there is a reason. My, my father, my family come from that area, so originally uh, I'm probably... Uh, uh, traditionally a Yorkshire lad at heart. So uh, Jordan is there. So it's pretty early, 7.34 in the, in the morning, Jordan. Wow. You know, I'm not a morning person. I struggle to get up in the morning for, for, for doing uh, the live show, so forgive me if I look a little bit sleepy. Jordan, welcome. I love your comments on YouTube, by the way. Always great to have you in. Emily Crichton, I think. Is it Crichton, Emily? Please forgive me if I've uh, pronounced it wrong. You're in the UK in London. Thank you for coming in, Emily. I will get the coffee on, Steve, uh, you know, but I'm probably going to do it towards the end of the show when I can have it with a lovely hot cookie. Um, Pardule, Pardulo, Pardulot. Now, I'm possibly thinking that's got a French uh, connection to it, but um, anyway, you've swapped from Google to YouTube, and I have received this and it's Michelle. So Michelle with one L, I'm guessing that is from France, but I may be wrong. Is it, uh, there's a French connection there, Michelle? Roddy, great to have you there. Let's pop that one on screen. Um, the gorgeous Roddy Chrome is in the house and he's moved from Google Plus to YouTube. So great to have you in, gorgeous Roddy Chrome. And I never know whether to call you Roddy, but I love the name, it's great. Good to have you here. Roger Alexanderson is, it's a bit confusing. Yeah, it shouldn't be this confusing. Hopefully over time, yesterday we did a test run of this uh, show and it went beautifully <laughs> today. It wasn't live of course, but it went beautifully and today it has gone. Now, um, Michelle has moved from uh, Google Plus to YouTube. It's just been taken off my screen, but that's great. So 
if you're having trouble commenting, if you're, if you're on the live show and you're looking at the question and answers app, which I think comes up on the left-hand side there, those questions don't seem to be coming through. We'll have a quick look at the Q&A app again, but I suspect it's gonna give me the same problem that we had earlier. I just get a box come up and it says there's a problem connecting to the server. I have no idea. We're gonna to have to research this to understand why this keeps happening for our live show. Now, I got told off for moving around. I know uh, we're gonna add a focus again. Let's have a little sit down on the stall. Let's look at some of the news around the world in food. Now, I was fascinated have I been to Rotherham? I've got a quick question there. Have I been to Rotherham from Steve? Steve is a good Yorkshire lad, although he lives in the USA. And I have been to Rotherham, of course, Steve. Um, Rotherham is where you're from, is it? I think I remember you saying once that you were from somewhere around there, but I have been to Rotherham. Um, I'm a Featherstone lad. <laughs> So uh, if that means anything to you, and I'm sure it does to you, Steve. So I've been looking at food news. Now, if anyone gets any food stories that fascinate them or are interesting, um, please drop a comment to me. And if they're current and relevant, we'll uh, have a look at them. One of the things that was happening here in Australia is um, I'm not a big fan of fast food chains as people who know me will testify but uh, mcdonald's here up in castle hill in in new south wales have started doing um i'm gonna put a link don't forget to go across to my channel by the way steveskitchen.com the show notes they're not perfect yet but they're getting better and i'll put links to these stories but up in castle hill they've been doing gourmet food and you go into um mcdonald's and you can choose selections of different burgers and things from a touch screen and they deliver it to your table and uh, they deliver the fries in a little um, metal frying basket. Uh, I have watched the video and I pretty much it looks like a McDonald's served in in a slightly polite manner but it reminded me when I've lived in Asia before there are some wonderful variations that McDonald's do around the world. Over here in Australia we have the um, Mac Oz which is a like a Big Mac and it has um, beetroot in it. Beetroot's a, a staple here in Australia. We eat probably more beetroot per capita than anyone in the world. Um, now, I know that in India they do a Mac curry. I think I've got that right. And I know that um, in parts of Asia they do some buns that are white and black in color. Uh, fantastic. So the white ones have chicken, the black ones are burger buns. Uh, they look very nice. So if you've got some unusual uh, I think there's a Mac Lobster in Canada as well. Is that called a Mac Lobster? So if you've got some unusual McDonald delights in your area, or if you're like me, you don't tend to eat in McDonald's or any fast food chains, let's hear your comments about that. Now, talking of eating in restaurants, uh, there was a great story this week of a couple in Iowa uh, called the Schultzes, and they were eating at a restaurant, and the service was appalling. Um, that they had to wait, I think it was nearly 20 minutes to get served and then I think 45 minutes before their food came cold and, and everybody in the restaurant was having a terrible time but the waiter himself was running around like uh, the, the proverbial blue backside fly and uh, trying to get them apologizing for everything being late and this couple, the Schultzes, they actually um, served tables when they first met each other and they felt very sorry for him. Uh, so they left a big tip. And I think it went viral. There was lots of pictures of this on, on the internet. Uh, they left a $100 tip to the guy and, and a big smiley face and, and, and passing on uh, the, the, the goodwill and just to try and make that guy's day, which I thought was quite a, a nice story because I've been in restaurants many times where the service has been appalling and, and you tend to feel a little bit annoyed and the last thing you want to do is, is actually leave a better tip. But this couple, uh, bless them, they thought, uh, let's take care of him. They gave him a $100 tip. I think the bill itself was probably only about $20, $30. And uh, it hopefully made made the guy's day. So that a, a, was a feel-good story. There are 16 people watching live. Now this show goes onto the channel 
And it will also be on my website, steveskitchen.com. The link will be below this video. And um, we, I think we're getting several hundred people watching over, over the period of the week, so that's nice. But I love to have uh, the live in here. The other uh, news stories uh, this week would go from the sublime to the ridiculous. Did anyone see the story about the Glam Burger, the most expensive burger in the world that was served recently in uh, Chelsea in London? Um, now, this Glam Burger or Hamburger uh, is gold leaf, edible gold leaf uh, on the bun. It, it has lobster. It has Kobe beef. I think they had venison from somewhere in New Zealand. It had... Um, a truffle on there, a white truffle, which was also gold leaf. I mean, this is from the sublime to ridiculous. Eleven hundred dollars pounds. Now, if someone in the comments wants to um, check what that is in U.S. dollars, I suspect it's getting up to the sort of two thousand U.S. dollar mark for a burger, <laughs> just a burger with fries. So um, uh, it was to celebrate some special event at the the restaurant. The restaurant was called honky tonks and it's in chelsea so if you want to get across there and buy one i certainly will be dropping in for my uh, 1100 pound burger next time i'm in chelsea uh, <laughs> actually wouldn't it be fun i actually have gold leaf here for food when i do some of the indian desserts that i make um, we use gold leaf edible gold leaf uh, wouldn't it be fun to make that burger i have to get some kobe beef and uh, white truffles might be a bit tricky uh, it, um, the ingredients that they put into it are ridiculously expensive, and I'm not sure if anybody's uh, ordering these burgers, but I presume there are the odd celebrity there that's, that's ordering them. Um, getting a few comments through, I might have a little pause from the news. We've got a little peanut butter story here in Australia, which I'll share. Uh, Faith Lewis, are, am I in Aust are you Australian? Yeah, I am Australian, I'm Aussie. Um, I'm English as well, obviously. A lot of my Aussie friends tend to, to, to rag me about being a, a POM, uh, but I'm an Australian citizen also, so yes, and I live here in uh, Melbourne, Australia. I've lived in other parts of Australia as well. I uh, lived up in uh, Brisbane for, a, not in Brisbane, but actually in the Sunshine Coast for a short time as well. Um, now, Anne, it's really great to have you in, Anne. Anne, Easy Gluten Free on YouTube, great friend of mine. Um, do, do I happen to know if fluff is gluten free? It seems like it might be. Well, Anne, I've got the jar here, but um, it doesn't specifically say that it's gluten free. So now I suspect in the US, you might be able to find that out, but there's no reason why it should have any gluten in it. Basically, we're looking at uh, sugar and, um, and and egg whites. So no, there should have a little bit of salt in there. So they, I, I'm going to, um, I sometimes make this, so uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now, Anna is asking, uh, McDonald's seem to change their strategy and prices getting higher and higher. In Japan, we've got a great croquet burger. Um, have I got that right? It's a croquet burger? It's a little blurred to me. Yeah, I bet in Japan, McDonald's is a different kettle of fish. I, I, I know that uh, I used to go to McDonald's in, in Hong Kong uh, quite a lot, and I've been to McDonald's in China as well. And and uh, when Hong Kong, uh, when when McDonald's first came into China, they had to make a lot of changes because um, we're going back to the uh, uh, the 80s now when they first started coming over there, and they had to make some changes to the way they presented food. But slowly, it's become this homogenous sort of uh, deal where they're just pretty much the same and there's a few variations can we scroll the questions up to near the top <laughs> so rockstar from uh, denmark beautiful having you in <laughs> looking mighty fine as usual in my australian get up here 
are really going to have to finish these uh, news stories because we're going to have to get and bake. I wonder if anyone's going to be baking with me today. Don't forget, we need a little bit of Nutella, one egg, uh, some self-raising flour, soft brown sugar, a little bit of salt, and some baking soda. So if you want to uh, get involved and cook along with me, we'll be doing that very shortly. We're talking of peanut butter. One of the last news stories I'm just going to cover here. Here in Australia, there was a big uh, hoo-ha about um, one of the supermarket chains here called Safeways, and they put out peanut butter jars, and they hadn't got the allergen uh, sticker on them. So they had to recall or because it didn't say may contain nuts. And there was a lot of um, hoo-ha because it's quite ridiculous, really. At first, I thought this is a really stupid story. They're, they're recalling all these peanut butter jars because it didn't have the sticker on there saying may contain nuts. I looked into a little bit more, and there was a, a little bit more to it. Um, there were apparently some uh, different variants of nuts that were found in the peanut butter and they have a cashew nut butter as well and that had traces of peanuts in it so but uh, what is the world coming to when um, when you're having to take back jars of peanut butter because it hasn't got the may contain nuts uh, sticker on it now I am going to answer a few questions and then we're going to start making peanut butter cookies we're going to be making a twist on them because i love pb and j so we did i say it's a national nutter fluffer nutter week as well i'm going to get off the stool now that's the news over with now when question uh, some of the questions are getting repeat questions that i've had before so we will uh you, you'll need to go through and watch the video from the beginning we please excuse me if I don't answer your questions. And I may not be able to answer all the questions. Um, what does off... I, I'm not sure I understand that. You've highlighted that one. No. Karen Sanders in the UK. You've put a question up there, and, I'm, and it's 12.25, so good night, good morning to you. I didn't quite understand what about a doze off <laughs> I use a doze off like we're all gonna yeah I could doze off at the moment uh, so you're about to doze off okay I understand now because of the time it is there so let's get on I'm gonna bring the camera down now here if you fancy making cookies with me we're going to get on um, Got, uh, just check my ingredients here. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm going to bring that camera in a little bit closer. I'm using lightly salted butter. We've got half a cup of soft, lightly salted butter. Just going to pop that into my bowl. I've got one cup of soft brown sugar. And the reason we're popping these two together, obviously, is because we are going to be creaming them together. So I'm just going to take a spoon now and start to mix this up into a sort of sugary batter. Now, if anyone is joining me and making cookies today, they can comment down below. And if I see comments coming up every now and again, we're going to have a little pause. And it seems a bit, a little bit like last week. We're getting um, comments coming through sporadically, so I might get a big group. So we just—you want to get your sugar and butter and just cream it together using the spoon. I've got a wooden spoon, just pushing it against the bowl until we get this sort of sugary paste. Okay, actually looks surprisingly like peanut butter, and that's because I've used the soft brown sugar. Now, as with most cookie recipes, we are now going to add an egg into that, and there's a good chance that our batter will become a little bit uh, broken or split, but we're not going to worry about that. Now, as I said, I'm using self-raising flour. I've got a cup and a half of self-raising or self-rising flour, and that's gonna bring this all together but I am using some baking soda as well. Now that's optional, you don't have to use it, 
I think it gives a better texture to your cookies, and so I'm going to be using it. Let's get a little bit of salt. I've got about a um, quarter of a teaspoon of salt. A little bit of salt because I'm using lightly salted butter or reduced salt butter. If you use salted butter, you might not want to add the extra salt. So we've got a bit of a batter there now. Got half a cup of peanut butter. Now I'm using crunchy. I will use, uh, if I can find it, I'm going to get covered in food today. It is a completely different thing doing these live shows because you do have to see every stage. Of course, when we make these. So now I'm mixing the peanut butter in there. Should have probably put that in a little bit earlier on. Want to whisk that together or beat it together until we've got an even batter. Right, we don't need to sift this flour. It really isn't that important. I've got a cup and a half of self-raising flour. Just going to sprinkle that on top. This is going to make this into a cookie dough, of course. I've got half a teaspoon of baking soda as well. And like I say, this is self-raising flour. You could skip the baking soda, but I wouldn't. It does make a difference, and I have done it both ways around. I just think you get a better dome to the cookie. Now, I'm saying that. This is live. You'll probably find the cookies will either <laughs> completely fail. You see now that is starting to come together to a traditional cookie dough. Now, that is probably about the perfect texture. I'm not going to get my hands in there just at the moment. mainly because I don't want to get too mucky with doing the live show and all. I'm just going to scrape this bowl down to move over to my blue spatula. That is our cookie dough. Now I'm going to be chilling this cookie dough in the freezer for just for, a f just for maybe five minutes or so. Um, got a Silpat cookie tray, you could use baking paper, uh, or you can put it straight onto a cookie tray. I'm going to take some of this dough now, and it is quite wet. I wonder actually, you see, I might have added a little extra flour into that, and I'm thinking maybe I will. Let's just uh, hold a moment. So you see, if you see the texture there now, it's just a little bit wet for me. I've got another cup of flour. I'm not putting this whole cup, cup in. I'm just going to put probably about a quarter of a cup at the most. I want to bring this cookie dough a little drier. And this can vary a lot for everybody that's cooking um, at home. Egg sizes vary, the temperatures of your butter, the dryness of your envir environment can vary. So now, Paulie Blagger said, did he say fluff a nutter? <laughs> you know, I think even when I was a kid, that was a, a, funny, a, a funny thing, uh, <laughs> fluff a nutter. But yes, you haven't heard of it? A little extra flour in there, not too much now. And we are just adjusting our recipe on the fly because it was a little bit too wet for me. And get my hand in there now. Nope, even a little bit more. And I think that's probably because I'm using larger eggs. So have a little bit of extra flour. Now that dough is feeling a little better to me. It's, it's silky, but it's not quite so sticky. So what I'm going to do is take some balls of dough, I'm going to roll them till they're the size of uh, a table tennis ball, I'm going to pop them onto my cookie tray. 
Now you could weigh these out, but we're not gonna be too precious about them. So I'm getting, you know, I'll do the questions in a moment. I'm just gonna finish rolling these out because I'm gonna pop these into the freezer. I'm just going to do, how many shall I do? Six or eight of these quickly. And this is not like, <laughs> for those of you that know Blue Peter, it's not like Blue Peter. I haven't got some, uh, a lot of these kids' TV shows or cooking shows, I haven't got some already in the cooker. So we are going to be making these live, baking them live and eating them live. See this big one over here? This one is huge. I don't care. That's going to be for me. Now, traditionally, I'll just dry and get the cookie dough off of my hands. Traditionally, with peanut butter cookies, we tend to put a cross, a fork cross on them. So we push them down just a little bit and put that little chevron design on top. That's the way I like my peanut butter cookies. Did anyone get the, the, the girl guides or the, um, the brownies coming around to their houses selling cookies when they were younger? Or do they still do it now? I'm sure they actually do. Anyway, they used to make great peanut butter cookies and they always had this little chevron design to hold that down there now. Now I'm gonna pop this tray into my freezer for just a few moments and just let it firm up, okay? Let's come back up to the other camera view. Now whilst that chills in the freezer, Got my oven on 180 degrees Celsius, 350 Fahrenheit. Just bring that up to temperature to cook these cookies off. I've got a bit of dough left over. Anybody would like some dough? Um, clearly, you can make a bigger batch. Now, Rockstar, there's a big question there. Um, you've noticed that burger chains in Denmark are marketing American burgers with the US flag, salsa, and they make it sound very proud, whole, wow, salsa. Your salsa is the wrong, I don't see the connection. National. F <laughs> yes, it, it's, it, it's one of those um, strange things around the world, but you know, it's all to do with marketing at the end of the day, Rockstar, they're all, they're all trying to find ways of getting you in there. Um, I don't eat. McDonald's as a rule. Uh, I've done a few videos on my channel where I've actually made a fillet filo of fish, fillet of fish. And um, so uh, there's a side question my father in was... Now Rockstar, with that question, if you can post that, uh, probably you have done it on YouTube, I'll answer it later on YouTube because it's a little bit uh, in depth. So we're, I will answer that question for you. You know I always come back and answer everybody's questions. Have a little uh, bit of water. So nobody said if they're making cookies with me and nobody said if they've got their fluff now, when I went to get the fluff out of the cupboard, I don't know if you can see, you probably can't with the quality of this camera, but I'm pretty sure the fluff was up to here. Now, either somebody's been sneaking in there and taking fluff without letting me know about it, because the fluff is mine, of course, or <laughs> it's just condensed down, which I think actually is more to the point. Uh, this, these airy um, Italian meringues, they do settle down. Once you take the lid off, they will mysteriously shrink in size. So one day you'll open it and it'll be full to the top. Uh, you'll leave it a couple of days and it'll have gone down halfway. At least that's what I think, unless the fluff monsters have been coming in my house and pinching the fluff. So I've got enough for the recipe today. I'm going to be using 
strawberry jam and fluff. Emily Nicole, hi, welcome. Oh, it's great to have you in, Emily. Um, you were late, you're making a pavlova. Why isn't it crispy yet? Huh. One and a half hours. Well, it should be. It should be getting crispy by now. Did you um, use your eggs from the fridge, or did you use them at room temperature? Because that makes uh, quite a difference. If you're taking cold eggs from the fridge, that will make your meringue set a lot slower. So uh, be careful with that. When you're making a pavlova, if you want a more sticky and gooey meringue, use your eggs from, from the fridge. It actually inhibits the setting of the, uh, the meringue. So um, if you want a really good pavlova and you want to make it the classic design, then make sure you have room temperature eggs. Now I saw a little tip on a, a program once, if you ever have to make something that needs room temperature eggs, you can take those eggs out of the fridge, if they were in the fridge. I don't keep my eggs in the fridge. Um, and uh, just put them into hot water for five minutes and the heat, not boiling water from a kettle, but fairly hot water, and the heat then will allow the egg to warm up. <laughs> Anna's been to the, you've been to the gym. You've just been to the gym? Of course I've been to the gym this morning. Did a five mile jog around uh, Melbourne here. Just done a few push-ups before the show started. No, hang on. No, I think that was a dream. <laughs> I actually scrambled out of bed, got dressed, came downstairs and thought to myself, oh no, one hour to a live show. <laughs> I wasn't organized, didn't sleep well last night. I don't know why, I usually sleep reasonably well, but I didn't sleep great last night. So I woke up very sleepy this morning. Uh, what is the first thing I do in the morning when I get up is jump straight in the shower and try and revive myself. And I went for a little walk around. I didn't go for a five mile run. Uh, I went for a little walk around outside just to get some fresh air. So I don't know how long it's been. There's 18 viewers in the live show. Welcome to every one of you. Now, I will just say comment tracker. The, oh, I should have said this maybe earlier. The Q&A app. It's like a green box down the bottom, doesn't seem to be working. We've, we've connected to it and Google keeps saying trouble connecting to that. We'll have a quick look now. I'm pretty sure it's gonna say exactly the same. Trouble connecting to the server. So we're getting none of those questions coming through. So don't ask your questions there. If you have questions, go across and watch the video on YouTube or go to the Google Plus stream and type them in there. Uh, a few of the viewers today have already gone across now and are watching this in YouTube and you can comment down below. It's a little bit fiddly, I'm very sorry, nothing out, out of our control. Uh, yesterday it was working fine, today it is not. HJKS Musi, uh, hi Steve, hi and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. So all the comments that are coming through are coming seem to be coming through from YouTube at the, at the moment. So if you're wanting to get a question across, close down your, um, well, don't know, go across to my YouTube channel, click on the video there, and it will come up in the regular YouTube viewer, and below you should be able to type a question. What about that Glam Burger? Does anyone fancy uh, a, a burger? I'm guessing it would be a brioche-style roll similar to what I made um, for my pork sliders, which are very trendy at the moment. I have to say, I really like a white crusty roll when I'm having a burger, but it'll be that brioche style roll, and they've covered it in gold leaf, and uh, it's got lobster and beef, and uh, there's caviar in there, and a big white truffle. The truffle on top, has been covered in gold. I think the truffle itself is probably worth about maybe five or six hundred pounds. Um, because it looks to me like they've used a whole white truffle, which are extremely expensive. Now, 
We've got 19 viewers in. Let's see if we get any questions come through. There, it's gone a little bit. All right. So Emily Nicole has just told me her eggs were in the fridge. So they were cold. You missed the start, Emily. Well, you can watch the show live. It's always a bit of a pie fight, but um, you can watch the show. Don't delete them too early because I'm still want to refer back to them. Sorry, I've got my helper here. And we, we've got, why have we got two pages there now? I've got a second. Hmm? Okay. So cold eggs, Emily, don't use them for meringues. Use room temperature eggs. Make sure they've been out of the fridge at least 12 hours overnight would be fine. But just get them up to that room temperature and the meringue will set a lot better. Paulie Blagger. <laughs> you in Australia? You in Aussie? Uh, it's a bit flaky on the connection. Yeah, I, that could be, well, that's almost certainly my side. I've had some good news. I think I'm going to get a faster connection. I've been talking to the telecom company. They're a pain in the backside here in, in Australia. They really are providing very poor quality service for the price. We're paying $120 plus for internet connections, which are possibly some of the slowest in the world so it almost feels like dial up at some time but uh thank you paulie and welcome to steve's kitchen raven blade one of my regular viewers on youtube how are you um i'm glad you find it entertaining i hope it is these live shows to me when i first did them i thought they were a bit like i'd love to hear actually your comments down below if you think they are too long um but with a live show, they're always going to take a little bit more time. I quite enjoy them. Um, I watch other channels that do live shows, and I always quite enjoy having them on in the background. You can pop them up on the TV if you've got uh, Chrome or, or Apple TV or wh whatever they call it for the Apple. I do have a Macintosh here, but I'm a, a PC user. Thank you, Raven. You're making them HK... H-J-K-S Musi, um, you're making them beautiful. Then you are going to be smelling what I smell very shortly. And my oven is probably getting close to temperature. So uh, I'm going to get them out of there. What happens if you click the two? I'm just going to talk to my help. Is that a second page of questions? Okay, coming in from Google Plus as well. So we are getting comments from Google Plus. Um, but they are, are oh, their older comments from, from the day before. So that's all good. Right. I'm going to get those out of the freezer now. My picture is frozen. Go back to page one. Now they've only been in there a short while, but you'll see that they are locked firmer. Now that isn't, um, gone very laggy the picture they are a lot firmer I'm gonna cook these for about 10 10 minutes I'm gonna keep an eye on them I'm gonna pop them in that oven 180 degrees uh, 350 Fahrenheit pop these in the oven and we'll be taking them out soon I'm gonna pop a 10 minute reminder for me Saguri no, I haven't said hello to them. Just one minute. We're having a little a little uh, thing here. Are we organised? No, not really. Not really. So, oh, Ginga. Uh, 21, 22 is in the house. Hi, welcome. What's my favorite fruit? What is my favorite fruit? Wow. I suppose probably, I, I really like raspberries um, and I like melon. 
You know, I'm not a big, not a big strawberry fan, but then uh, I do love strawberries. But uh, of late, I've never been able to find even when you pick the strawberries, whether the varieties are different. I find the strawberries have lost all their beautiful flavors they used to have. So um, um, I've never been a big strawberry. Raspberries, big fan of raspberries, big fan of oh pineapple. Absolutely love pineapple. Should have remembered that. I was once doing a road trip in Australia. We were we were driving up uh, up the coast here from Melbourne up into uh, Queensland, and everywhere I stopped, I bought, bought sliced pineapple. And when I lived in Asia, I used to eat a lot of pineapple as well. Uh, we used to have a um, a coconut tree in our garden as well. Uh, so I do like coconut, but that is technically is that a fruit? No, it's a nut. Thank you, Ginga2122. We'll move that one off. So we're getting, somehow we're getting all the comments coming back through from going from that page two on our stream. It seems to have brought up a lot of old comments. So we're just having to tidy them up. If you are asking questions, um, hopefully they'll come up shortly. I think any of the ones in Google Plus are old questions. Mary, you're enjoying watching the live show. Pop Mary up on the screen. Yeah, now that would be a great idea. You're saying, should I, um, could we swap out the pumpkin puree for the peanut butter? You could, but it depends on how dry your pumpkin puree is. Now, pumpkin puree has a lot of liquid in it, so you might have to cut back a little bit uh, now you probably have to increase the flour content a, a little bit. You saw the texture I was getting there. I have made pumpkin cookies and I'm trying to think um, off the top of my head, I can't remember exactly the ingredients we use. I'd be putting pumpkin spice in there as well. Somebody asked me earlier in the week uh, what goes into my pumpkin spice and um, I actually have a video that I, that I use uh, on YouTube showing you how to make uh, mixed spice or pumpkin spice, those sweet spices that use cinnamon and uh, mace and uh, uh, nutmeg, ginger, the usual sort of flavors that remind me of, of Christmas. So yes, Mary, you can use pumpkin and uh, that would be a great alternative. Rockstar, what, what do I think about burgers being sold for 30 or 40? What's the sound like, by the way? We're using a different sound get up this week. I'm using my wireless mic, so hopefully uh, the sound is cool. Uh, $30, $40 for a burger. Look, I suppose it depends on... Oh, too expensive. That would be my first, my first answer. Too expensive. But, you know, it depends. Um, if... If they're using really high quality, um, mature beef that's been hung for many weeks, so the flavors are in there, uh, you can understand that the costs of those, those products maybe are making a difference. But there are a lot of places that are doing what they call uh, you know, fancy burgers uh, at very high prices, and they're just using regular beef mints and, and, and nothing too special. Um, so I think $30, $40, too expensive for a burger, but certainly if I was going to have a burger that was worth thirty or forty dollars, I'd probably be making my own. I'd go to a, a good quality butcher. I'd buy a well matured uh, beef or or lamb, uh, depending on what you want, uh, or a combination of different meats. So yeah, very expensive. <laughs> Paulie Blagger, 120 for dial-up. You can't get a burger for that these days. Where are you? Uh, are you blagging me? <laughs> Where are you getting your burgers from? $120. You can't get a, a decent burger for much under about $1,100 apparently, or pounds, as, as, as I was saying earlier about the Glam Burger in Chelsea. Gold-plated hamburger. I wouldn't mind trying it, but I wouldn't want to pay eleven hundred pounds for it. Did anyone work out eleven hundred pounds in 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 uh, uh, Aussie dollars or US dollars? 
Autumn Moon, welcome to Steve's Kitchen. You are, let's have a little look, you're making the fluff and nutter cookies at the moment, but, oh, you're not making them, I'm sorry, that's me reading it. Um, you're making the soul cakes, is that right? It's gone very blurry on my screen, so it's all gone like a pixelated from, uh, like I've got a Minecraft screen at the moment. Uh, you're making soul cakes. Now, I did a video on soul cakes. They're a traditional uh, Halloween cake. Now, the series, by the way, the Halloween series that's going up, I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we've got some new videos going up and some older videos that I'm relaunching. Some of the, the, the better quality ones I'll be relaunching all the way through October. Now, I, I hope it's not too much, and, and I'm always willing to get constructive criticism from people, but I'm probably putting up a video almost every day, every second day, all the way through October. So lots of fun to look out for there. So stay subscribed, comment on those videos uh, as and when they come up. So, yeah, once I've finished those, can you move them out of the way so I can start to concentrate on the next question? <laughs> Should you ever use cold eggs for anything? Paulie, you're in Devon in the UK. <laughs> so it's late there. Um, should you use cold eggs for anything? Hmm. See, I've never kept eggs in in the the, the fridge. So uh, we've just had a big error come up on our screen. Something's been touched that uh, some script, an unresponsive script. So we'll say continue. No, continue. So let's hope this uh, doesn't interrupt the show altogether. Now, how many minutes have we got? One minute and 50. I'm just going to have a quick look in the oven, see how these are coming on. Oh, now they've puffed up beautiful and round. My ones have. Um, they're already uh, sort of golden brown, but I want them to go a little bit darker than they are. And I believe they puffed up like they are because of the addition of the extra little bit of baking soda in there. And I have baked them both ways. And $1,770 for that Glam Burger. Well, see, that's almost the same in Aussie dollars. So that is, wow. <clears throat> that's a crazy amount of money. That's kind of obscene really, isn't it? Uh, nobody should be spending that. I know they did it for promotion, and I think the Guinness Book of Records were there to verify it was the most expensive one, so it's all legitimate. And it's a bit of fun at the end of the day. So, Little Rhubarb, you've got a um, comment there saying, yes, you love the idea of the live feed. Are we getting rid of ones... A little rhubarb is saying also about the prices. It's 2009 Aussie dollars. So obviously the exchange rates are fluctuating. Um, anyway, great to have you up. And yes, it would be nice if the technology could catch, catch up. Because right now, um, I'm really quite enjoying these live events. They, they are good fun. Andrea, welcome. Is Andrea wanting? She is uh, a regular commenter on YouTube and uh, she's enjoying the Halloween series. Let's pop Andrea up on screen for a moment. There you are, Andrea. Beautiful having you in the kitchen. Can you hear my beeper? Got to get my cookies out. Let me get myself a little heat proof glove. Now, I'm pretty happy with those. They are giant, giant cookies. Now, I did make them quite big. Look at the, let's get the other camera up just for a moment. I'm going to let these cool down. Actually, I don't know if it's much better to see them on that. You can see the little crisscross chevron on the top? They're looking good. Now, I want to pop them behind me. I'm going to let them firm up, let them cool down a little bit. Then we are to be adding. You can have the cookies. If you're making these at home, you can have the cookies as they are. 
better t turn my, sorry, forgot to turn my alarm off. And it was great to have you in, Andrea. So, Ginga, um, Ginga2122 loves the dragon fruit. Yeah, I must admit, I do like dragon fruit. Um, we get a lot of dragon fruit here in Australia. They sell it uh, just in my local market, and uh, it's it's delicious. Uh, Mary, thanks for answering my question. We have... We have pumpkin spice, a mix of spices that I use whenever I use pumpkin puree for baking. Yes, exactly. I mean, I actually make my own little batch. Let's just check. No. <laughs> you see, I always get mixed up because I have two little pots like this. One I keep uh, my spices in and the other one have scotch bonnet chilies in. And... <coughs> I can tell they're the Scotch bonnets because I just gave them a bit of a sniff. Oh, silly me. Emacs 07. Did you miss anything? Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are. Did you miss anything? No, I, yeah, well, you've missed things, obviously, but uh, you can watch the show in its entirety on YouTube straight afterwards and still comment down there. What you might have missed is the question and answers app inside the Google Hangout is not working. So comments, obviously, only through YouTube at the moment. Paulie Blagger, do I have a video on making fluff? The simple answer to that is no, but I'm going to make one. I might actually do it this week and try and get it up soon because it's kind of relevant. Fluff can be made in, in I've seen people making it uh, with uncooked eggs and a lot of uh, powdered sugar. I Fluff to me is, is an Italian meringue. It's a soft meringue, so um, I will be making it with egg whites, and um, and and a syrup which we will be heating up, so it will actually cook the egg white slightly, makes it safer to eat, and is absolutely delicious. When so, yes, we will be making it soon. I, I will do that. I promise. I will put up a video very shortly showing you how to make fluff at home. It's not that difficult, really. Paulie Blagger, is anyone else, Paulie? Uh, is anyone else watching this in bed? Yeah, I, I'm in bed watching this, Paulie. Uh, I don't know if anyone else is watching it in bed. Maybe they'll comment down below. Of course, these are going out on YouTube, so maybe people will, will see them. Emily, Nicole, what is my day job? At the moment, Emily, I'm concentrating mostly on, I mean, a lot of people tend to wonder whether I am <laughs> retired, but um, because I've, uh, it's, it's, it's a very long and complicated story, but at the moment I'm concentrating on the YouTube channel uh, pretty much full time because I'm enjoying it. And I tend to be fairly lucky. I do have, I'm in a position where I can actually just do what I enjoy doing, which is YouTube at the moment and this cooking channel and getting involved with you people out there. And hopefully we're going to be doing some traveling next year and we might be coming to some of the other countries around the world and meeting people and doing cooking demonstrations. So that will be great. Anna, you wish you could smell my cookies. Well, can you not smell them? Oh, I can smell them. They're still very soft. I might slide a couple of these out onto the countertop so they cool down. Where's that big one? Oh, no, I won't go for He's huge. Some of these are the size of tennis balls. <laughs> Little rhubarb. I love this comment. This is, this is, look, for many, many months, I'll just come over here.
brown sauce. I think uh, we, we mentioned this with Steve from Steve's Cooking the other week. This is one of my favorite brown sauces, HP. There's also one called Daddy's Sauce. And I've had this on the side now for months and months to remind me to make homemade brown. Because we, we've lived in places around the world you cannot get brown sauce. These are fruity sauces, by the way. They're fruit-based sauces. So I used to make a lot of brown sauces and uh, Branston pickles, homemade Branston pickles and the like. And they're not difficult to make. I'm very sorry. I will try to do the brown sauce. And you can remind me in the comments until I do. We've got Halloween at the moment. so, And then we've got Christmas. Mm, so you, time just runs away with you. I sometimes say to people, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And then just time runs away. So I'm very sorry if I don't get around to it, but I will be getting around to the brown sauce. Now, what's that, what's Paulie saying there? Paulie, actually I made a cake for your challenge, but my partner sold it. Now, the, the, the cake competition, by the way, ends, I think on, um, is it two days from now? So if you are gonna enter that competition, you need to get your entries in really quickly now uh, because in a couple of days it will all be uh, closed. I think it was the 10th, did we say? So any entries that come in, if you haven't seen that, I will leave a link at the bottom of this video on my Steve's Kitchen. If you want to enter it, Paulie, bake it again. Get an enter. All you have to do is bake a cake based on my pound cake recipe make a very we've had some great entries uh james made a a cake where he put my initial steve kitchen inside the cake and he baked it um and went for a, a gluten-free version but she's also challenged me with another cake um there was a mickey mouse ear one which i really liked as well which um so if you're interested in entering just bake a cake whatever style you want whether it's a lemon cake whatever actually better to be something that i i didn't bake in the series because whatever, whichever of you win, I'm going to bake that one on my channel. Now, these cookies are lovely and chewy. If I show you one, I mean, they're still warm, obviously, so they're going to be chewy, but let's just uh, break that one open. They're soft, <laughs> soft, and oh, I'm gonna have a little try. Hmm. Oh, delicious. I'd really like those to firm up a bit. Ginger2122, you didn't know how watching the live stream would help you with your physics homework. <laughs> well, I'm glad it is. Now get your homework done. Now, Let's take one of these cookies and put the other camera on a moment. Fluffer Nutter, National, National Fluffer Nutter Day. Is there such a thing? Well, there apparently there is. Oh, that one's completely crumbled. It's still too hot. But I haven't got a lot of time I should have probably put these on a rack so they cool down a bit. What I am going to do, <laughs> because I can, is I'm going to take some strawberry jam and only strawberry jam because I didn't have raspberry jam, which is one of my favorites. Strawberry jam will do though. I'm going to spread some strawberry jam on this fluffer nutter sensation let's not skimp on it too much got another spoon and for those of you that haven't had fluff before this is what it looks like almost like marsh liquid marshmallow we're going to try and pop that now this is always tricky never easy to spread fluff anata or fluff <laughs> Oh, yeah. Actually, we don't need to spread it too much. My cookies are very soft, so they're probably going to collapse on me. Mm -hmm. 
yum yum try and get that off of my finger now let's see which one of these have called the most this one probably here see that beautiful look at the crackle on there if you were doing chocolate crackle cookies this is the recipe to use with a mixture of uh, baking powder and soda now we're just going to pop this on there and you see what we've got there it's like a great big jammy or a whoopie pie let's bring that camera back up should have made myself a coffee let's get the coffee on back to the other cab now there we have it there is my peanut butter jelly and fluff oh you know i'm it takes me back to my childhood let's give this give this a little try i'm going to have to be quiet though let's have a look mm. Mm. oh heavenly oh yum yum <laughs> I wish I could share these. I hope some of you are baking them. If you haven't got the fluff, you can still put the jam. If you're just making these peanut butter cookies, you can always put a bit of jam. I think the Americans call it jelly inside. And it's a really beautiful uh, peanut butter and jelly cookie. Fantastic. Chill these down, actually, so the jam sets nice and firm. It'd be like a jammy dodger. I love jammy dodgers. So Emacs 07, what, bring that question up for me on screen. Can't wait for the fluff video. I get paranoid when I'm making egg-based recipes. So when you said you make it safer by cooking the what? Yes, because what we do, Emacs, is bring up our um, our sugars to a very high temperature. I think about uh, oh, to softball, which is about a hundred and. I won't say the temperature, I'll get it wrong. And, and we then effectively um, uh, temper the eggs. And it should be fairly safe. So that, I will do that fluff video, promise. <laughs> Probably along with the brown sauce in about nine, ten months' time. But no, I'll try and do the fluff, fluff video. Ravenblade, you, your YouTube crashed. Have I got jam over me now? Well, I hope you're back in. Gorgeous Roddy Chrome. Have I ever put cayenne pepper to peanut butter cookie with a pinch? You know, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. That would be nice. I'd like that. No, I haven't. But it's a great idea. And I'll, I won't do it now because I... I probably end up getting the scotch bonnets and then I'll be my nose will be running but I'll give that a try straight afterwards Roddy thank you for the suggestion so yeah a little bit of chili a little bit of spice in with your peanut butter and jam that's got to be good hey I love combinations of food I mean I used to love peanut butter jam and Anne will know because she loves bashing up bananas but um uh, mashed banana as well that was another one when I was a child of course I'm not eating this sort of stuff now when I'm an adult, I don't eat silly childish food like that. Oh, yes, I do. Mmm. <laughs> Emacs, um, is fluff the same as marshmallow cream? Yes, really. Yes, really, it is uh, pretty much the same. I'm just popping my microwave on. I'm heating up a little bit of milk. I would love to have a coffee. This show has gone on longer than before, so we're going to probably have to bring it to an end soon. It is pretty much the same um, as a marshmallow spread. Well, that's where, where it originated from. Kayla Singh, hey, welcome to Steve's Kitchen. The show is coming to an end soon, I think. When I put my coffee on, it's getting towards the end of the show.
Ginger 2122. Sorry for the misunderstanding, but Steve, you are my king. Well, I thank you. I don't know if I've misunderstood that. Did I? Did I? Did you say something? Now, Ginger 2122. What's the strangest thing I've eaten? Wow, so many strange things. I had, <laughs> I had very recently. Um, uh, pig's brain and I've never eaten the pig's brain. Well, I, I probably have eaten the pig's brain in, in various dishes before but that was um, Almost like a like a liver pate uh, Not my favorite Emily Nicole who is my favorite celebrity chef and um, my favorite cookbook title To, to be honest Emily, I'm, I'm probably gonna have to opt for Hugh Fernley Whitting store I don't know if you know Hugh um, only because of the, the the real way in which Hugh handles food, he and I ha are, are fairly kindred spirits in that respect. Um, you know, taking uh, taking food from from the wild, and and uh, I would highly recommend some of his earlier books as well that he he produced. Uh, Cook on the Wild Side is a wonderful book. But as I said last week as well, I love these old traditional books, historic books as well, uh, such as uh, Dorothy Hartley's um, Food in England. And um, there's a, there's quite a few, but uh, I, I do like, I'll give Hugh a mention there. There are a lot of uh, chefs that I admire, though, around the world. And generally, I admire um, chefs and cooks who who are looking for the, the authenticity of food. They're fascinated by um, food culture. Uh, where food comes from and traditions in, in that way. So I'm just going to get myself a coffee. I can tell you now that cookie is absolutely delicious. It's crumbling to pieces because it is still warm, but we've got the peanut butter, we've got the fluff in there and the jelly. You can't, you cannot beat it. I have, I'm a coffee drinker don't drink a lot of coffee, but I do drink coffee. A nice strong shot of espresso uh, in flat milk. Cheers, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the show this week. It's been a lot of fun. I hope some of you will be making peanut butter cookies. And, um, yeah, I'll just quickly check a few questions and see if there's anything I need to answer before I go. But cheers. And I, I'm dying to eat this cookie here and from easy gluten free yes Roddy's idea wasn't it a great idea I love the idea of adding spice in with that we're gonna have to try that one Anne. you've got the um, gluten free peanut butter uh, we can we can give that a try I might even try it straight after the show Ravenblade wow the cam switch was fast and cool well that's Great thank to my my helper here, my wife, by the way, who's who's always by my side, helps me with so much. She is an absolute marvel. And now she'll be getting big headed. Oh, if I take another bite, I'm not gonna be able to talk. Any last questions? If they come through on YouTube, I'll answer them there. They don't refresh super fast here. It's been a crazy long show today. We did start a little bit late. I'm very sorry if the, you didn't, um, if you were asking questions in the Q and A app, which for some reason didn't work. I hope you've been able to get your questions across. We had um, at least 20 viewers live in the show, and I hope more people will watch it. I'd love to hear your comments down below. By the way, if you like these live shows, whether we should continue to do them. Um, I hope uh, that they are not too long, but I'm also interested to hear what you had to say. Share those news stories to me if you have anything fun. It's topical. Uh, we've covered a few things today uh, to do with the Glam Burgers, the McDonald's, and I'm going to be leaving links. You get across to Steve's Kitchen right below this video on YouTube. There'll be a link there with notes from the show. I will remember to put the ingredients up for this particular recipe. Uh, which I forgot to do last week. I don't, by the way, put up step-by-step -step instructions because you can watch the video. Um, and I do actually have uh, these peanut butter cookies on my channel as well if you want to get across and just 
uh, check that out. So I hope you're enjoying the Halloween season. Love to every one of you. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Be good. Love you all.